Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary where it's been a really long time <laughs> since I've played. A uh, little over a month which is amazing honestly um, but I haven't quite I also haven't quite finished editing all the videos I think I have one more like large video where I think I ran around looking at all the like just clicking on all the planets and making sure I had a hundred percent um exploration on all of these places. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure, haha, because it's been so long. But I'm pretty sure I did do a hundred percent on all of them. So there's that. Uh the last thing then that I wanna do before we do the suicide mission uh is explore the Normandy crash site. Cause like I said, ages and eons ago, um the this is what I consider Shepard's personal mission. Um, which everybody else has like, you know, their we have the mission to acquire them and then we have their personal mission to gain their loyalty. This to me is Shepard's mission way to her way to she hasn't really had time to like grieve or like I think deal with things very like very like solidly like uh, like su sufficiently with what happened um you know and so we had you know people died and even though they said like they feel like they said most of everybody survived except for like one or two people but then the DLC is like just kidding like 20 people are dead but no this isn't necessarily even about them it's about making like the memorial and it's about Shepard getting a chance to walk through see the remains of like her old life and like kind of put put it to rest you know for me anyway that's how I see it there are some side missions left, but I do, and I really, I remembered this the other day when I was thinking about it, I do like to leave some side missions, actually, before I finish the game completely, because, um, for me, I like to imagine that Shepard gets to go around a little bit before, um, before she gets yoinked back by the Alliance. Uh, I like to imagine that she gets to go around with Dane, you know, and, like, with other, with her, with her crew, and, like, kind of finish some things up um oh shoot I don't have this did I just save this system is that why heck this system's at zero percent <laughs> I brought I maybe saved it Ooh, wow this is like an older older one approximately 127,000 years ago a series of battles were fought over this planet by two organic species the Thoihan and Inusanen most historians agree that both races wanted to colonize, but no records of the conflict remains. Okay. Dang. Many of the animal species that remain showed a tendency to develop biotic powers. Yikes. Ooh, well these, these objects, that are measured such and such while they're too deep to be reached for study. Popular conjecture in xenoarchaeological circles tells that they are coffins of an ancient race who laid their dead to rest in a gas giant. In like sailing coffins through a gas giant, that would be totally awesome. So this system has some mystery. But also, this is the system where we died. <laughs> I think, I, I feel like, yeah, this is the system where we were floating around and then like, that's why the Normandy, like, crash site is here. I'm not sure if they, like, try to be like, oh, it floated far away and then crashed. Like, that wouldn't make any sense. So, pretty sure this is where we were. And, like, could you imagine, like, driving into this system and, like, maybe recognizing the star patterns that are, like, ingrained on your nightmares, you know? That'd be, that'd be pretty wild. Anomaly detected. Uh... away I have found something yeah the wreckage I'm honestly super surprised now that I think about it that the wreckage is still there and that people haven't like yoinked it all I know this is a pretty remote system but we are kind of in the Omega system so I feel like people would have come here just for salvage purposes or like to be like here's a piece of Shepard's ship and sell them off you know 
Maybe it's been, maybe, maybe Cerberus kept it safe. Maybe the Alliance kept it safe. I don't know. The Alliance asked me to do this, actually. Oh, my baby. This is actually, this was actually super emotional for me the first time I did this. <laughs> because I truly got very attached to the SR1. Oh yeah, and I do, I'm pretty sure that Shepard, yeah, because I didn't pick anybody, Shepard gets to do this by herself. So this is like, I don't know, eerie and like, her moment, you know? It's for her. I mean, it would make sense to have like, Garrus here maybe or something, but this is for her. This is something she needs to do. Yeah. But look. Look at this. They made it kind of fetch questy, but I I do enjoy the chance to run around. Man, what I wouldn't give for a dog tag like that with the SR1 on it. But like, I also really like that it's like in this like icy planet, right? Where it's like frozen in time, you know, this moment. The like heat and fire of like the explosion is now like mitigated and like she rests eternal. You know, in the ice. My baby. I don't know. I don't know what it was, and I don't know. I'm sure I've said it a bazillion times, but there was just something about, can I not? Dang. I can't go up. How do I... What was that? Okay. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do either. I was actually just trying to put the gun away, but this is fine. <laughs> it's whatever. Oh, I'm distracted. I need to be looking at the ground to find these things. I don't know, and I'm pretty sure, I know I'm just jabbering over it, but like, it, oh no, so I was saying, like, when, like, I don't know, I never really got, like, bros who, like, I'll place the monument last, uh, I never really got bros who were like, mm, I love ships and cars and blah blah blah, I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever, like, what is their, what is the appeal and like, you know, just a hunk of machine that goes places, you know? I was just remembering, like, I remember seeing Caden when the game first starts in Mass Effect 1, Caden's sitting over there, and Joker sits here, and I think Presley died over here. <laughs> like, there's a lot of memories. Look at her, just cold and ice. But yeah, no, as soon as, I don't know what it was about, like, I think it was something about, like, the curve of the hull? I don't know, but as soon as I saw the SR1, like, come flying in in Mass Effect 1. Like, when it's in space and you see it flying in, I was I, I was struck. Like, my heart skipped a beat. As silly as it sounds, I was just like, like, I never liked ships or planes or anything. And then the SR1 flew into my life and I was like, Ugh! And that's when I started collecting, like, model ships. I have all three versions of the Normandy. They're packed away right now because I live out of a car. But... <laughs> Um, so they're safely enshrined in my, in my storage unit, but at this point, it's getting to the point where I'm thinking about getting, like, a nice glass case and having some, like, stuff out for display, because I go to my storage unit, like, once every couple months to, like, change things out and stuff. So it would be nice to have some of my stuff on display. But we did a whole freaking game in this ship, and to like see the remnants and to remember like the, like because it was really traumatic at the beginning of Mass Effect One, <laughs> when you're like everything's on fire and blowing up and people are running and screaming and I don't, just to, yeah to remember all the good times and to remember the terrible times and to see it just enshrined in the ice now is it's a poignant moment I think. Except I'm talking all over it, but, you know, that's what I'm... This is a YouTube video, I can't, 
can't necessarily just sit around silently. I usually edit that out. So. The command center. This ship was also um, the first Turian human... Oh, I could... Okay, so I have options. So I could place it here at the command center remains. Like, this was the first Turian human, like, initiative together. Spoke to the commander about this. All these dang aliens aboard the Alliance is the most advanced ship. I just don't trust them. That darn Asaurian Aquarium. What does Shepard think this is? A zoo? So, yeah, this is, uh, Presley. Something with the Quarant. It seems she's on some kind of pilgrimage trying to improve the lot of her own ship. I can understand that. I would babysit my children or anything, but if she has to be on board, I suppose that's not too bad. For a while now, I'm taking a look back at past entries. Uh, how blind I was at the time I came onto this ship, firmly believing humanity was on its own in the galaxy. Shepard brought all these aliens on board, and now there's no way we could have accomplished what we did without them. I'm proud to say something, die for any member of this crew, regardless of what world they are born on. So yeah, we see... Yeah. We see a little bit of Presley's growth, which you don't really sh see in the game. That's because you don't interact with him much. Just at the beginning, he's like, mm, aliens. And you're like, uh huh. <laughs> you know? But it's kind of like Ashley, where Ashley, you see it a little bit, but Ashley did, you know, she changed her ways. Like, she changed her tune. Oh, shoot. My helmet. Yeah, see, that totally would have been picked up in the last couple of years. People would have totally taken all my stuff. Well, that's kind of what Legion did. I'm pretty sure as he it came here and like picked up a piece of my armor that was like apparently had blown off of me and like slapped it onto its arm, you know? Maybe there are people I don't know who just kept things safe. Oh my gosh, wait a second. I think I must have thought this my Mako! What? Oh, of course she made it. Of course the Mako's intact. Just sitting here. I want to put the mon- Okay. Monument's going to be going right there. <laughs> if I can. Dang, it probably won't let me- Oh, I can! Yeah, Monument's going near the Mako. This is just- And the ship was so big, like, you never, you got to see it from the outside a little bit, but well, actually, did, whenever you landed, you got to, like, land and then walk out and be next to it, and the ship was big, but, like, seeing it in pieces like this is almost more... Even though it's, like, separated out, it's like, wow, this was a lot went into this ship, right? But it's just so, everything else is, like, falling apart, but the Mako, the Mako is eternal. She'll never die. Uh-oh. Oh, we did get to... We did send some SOS pods out. Oh, we sent them all out, actually. Like That's how everybody... Well, how most people were able to escape. See, now I got, I got thrown off. I don't know where I am. That's okay, though. How many dog tags? I don't know how many dog tags I have. <laughs> and it's just why it's wild. It, like I walked up and down that hallway for like so many hours. You know, stood at the command center for so many hours. Maybe I need to go further over here.
And I realize I, you know, by jabbering over it, I sort of take away from it a bit, but I'm pretty sure Shepard doesn't, um, doesn't say anything the whole time you're here. And I don't know, it's just, you gotta think she's having some, some, some thoughts, you know? And I, I don't know, I like that. 12 of 20, excellent. We're <laughs> over halfway and I have no idea. I'm, I'm losing track now. And geez, it's it's gorgeous. It's obviously my first time seeing all of this in in the updated graphics and I'm just looking at her armor right now and seeing the reflections in it. And like, I know it's not just her, I see her a lot. But like, seeing her here in this place, in this armor, is like, yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful. I'm so glad that they, that they did, that it, they went ahead with the remake. It's really nice. A remaster, not remake, remaster. Oh my gosh. Ashley, oh, I didn't even think about that part, right? Where like, yeah, a lot of people die, but Ashley was the first, right? And it was in like the conflict, but dang. I wonder if I, can I find, yeah, this was like the, the kitchen area. No, wait. Yeah, this is like, this is not a, this is where Caden would stand, I think. Because this is like the kitcheny main area. This isn't the basement. Right? Um, I could be hallucinating. Misremembering. Placing it there would be good too, as like an extra memorial to Ash. But, but she didn't die in the crash, so. to leave her behind. Can I? No. Alright, I've circled back to the start and I found <laughs> 16. Yeah, just missing 4. I am tempted to place it here too, like right in front of like the hall of the Normandy. Go. Seeing her broken it was really hard. She was such a beautiful, wonderful little ship. And I guess for me it was like this was like the, the it was like the, the vehicle, the vessel of like my entrance into Mass Effect. I mean, she was for everybody, right? Like it's just how it is, but like it's just the way the game is. <laughs> like, Mass Effect 1, you're on the SR1. But, like, I don't know. It was this whole new world for me to delve into that, like, I'd heard a little bit about. I was one of those people who, like, heard about the controversy of the Mass Effect 3 ending. And I was like, oh, why would I play a game that was so controversial? But then the more I thought, like, like you know, the, the people just, like, didn't like the ending after investing so much time into it. Um, but then I started thinking, I was like, well... This is, I think, what a lot of people thought, where it's like, well, now I'm curious. Like, what was it about this series that got people so invested that they were so upset when the Mass Effect 3 ending came around? So, I got it. And uh, I got it when I had strep throat. I specifically remember I worked at PetSmart, and I got strep throat. So I took a bunch of, like, two, two, day, two or three days off, and I played the first game in those two or three days. And I was like... I need more. <laughs> it was great. I was at the time. I remember. Oh no, this, that was that was a different thing. Okay, I remember now. I was like, I hadn't. I remember I hadn't wanted to try Dragon Age. I hadn't wanted to try Dragon Age because I 
had played Mass Effect and I was like, sci-fi is infinitely better, blah, 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 you know? Um, just another generic fantasy game, blah, blah, blah. But then I, you know, I was like, I've already played Mass Effect 1, 2. Maybe I played 3? I don't know. Because I do know for sure that I played 1, 2, a little tiny bit of 3. Just place the monument here in the open. 1, 2, a tiny bit of 3. And then I, I've told you guys before, like, I really wanted a romance thing, so I restarted. <laughs> I can't remember now, though. Um. Where? Or, like, when I started, when I, when I gave. Was there something? Oh. When I gave Dragon Age a chance at some, like, when, when in all the playings of Mass Effect I gave it a chance. But there was just some, there was just this game with the Mass Effect was just so, it was just so awesome. Like, the adventure in like the space like the sci-fi setting and like the p the characters you met and everything i'm being so not ugh i can't even do it justice all i do is ramble but there was just so this game meant a lot to me it's the first game the you know, mass effect series is the first series i uploaded to to youtube But even before that, I just, I was enthralled with, like, the beauty of space and the characters and the storylines and, like, how invested I got in everything. And it just hook, line, and sinker in the, in this, this here, this here ship. This here ship was the vessel for it all. And plus I, plus I just fell in love with her on her own. She was just... Just a beautifully designed ship. Something to, something about the aesthetic just caught my eye and my heart didn't let go. I knew it. I was looking at all the, the, the fragile crates and I was like, I'll bet you these those have dog tags in them. And then I was like, surely not. They do. But it's okay. I know where they are because I was keeping them in mind. <laughs> because I was like, hmm... What an odd thing to have, a breakable crate in an environment where there's no hostiles or anything. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. There we go. Now it's just time to place the monument. By the dear old Mako. She's kind of central too in this whole thing, but in the whole area, but... making my heart hurt a little. What? A, that's beautiful. I love it. Well, little girl. Time to head out. <laughs> oh, it's so cheesy. But she deserves this rest, you know? I'm... I'm just glad that they- I'm glad they included this. I don't know if they specifically did it to give Shepard her own sort of mini-mission. Um, but it feels like it, especially because she gets to go by herself, you know? So it's her own time to sort of- like everybody else got to do, right? Where they would- they came to terms with whatever past thing happened and moved on past it. This is Shepard's chance to do that, so. <sighs> Geth shield strength. Oh, okay, cool. Yeoman Chambers. Oh no, I can't believe you brought her up, game. Uh, 
she she's very dead. It's really unfortunate. But she's uh she was very dead. Okay. I thought maybe that so the Geth shield just like happened. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. Okay, yeah, it was just a uh, for my geth friend. I think he gets the better better shield, which is nice. Let me make sure everybody is good to go. Everybody's loyalty is locked in. Oops, nope, I'm trying to read. The alliance was grateful. You provided a peace of mind to a lot of people. You're welcome. Now we have to go talk to Thane one more time, and then <laughs> and then we'll be good to do the suicide mission. I'm, at, I'm nervous, I'm legit, I'm always nervous before doing the suicide mission. This man is just, Oh, I love him so much. It's just, like, not only is he, like, absolutely stunningly gorgeous, right? He's, uh, I just love, like, his vibe. Like, him and Samara are usually the people that I take out the most. Because I just love their aesthetic. Like, their, like, aesthetics as in, like, the, like, philosophical aesthetic. Like, philosophical? That's not a word. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I I won't even have time to edit that out, but now I'm just gonna throw myself out a window. Philosophical <laughs> aesthetic, right? Their like personal belief systems, like the way that they conduct themselves and like how Oh my gosh, I almost forgot about you fishies. The way that they just live their lives very honor bound to these particular codes that they have, these particular belief systems and like how they've managed to like have this like zen like what is the word um, perspective on like despite like they are, I think I've said it a zillion times but they're, 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 they're the calm within the storm even though like they are often like the central to like a storm of biotic power like a storm of like you know gunfire like they're in the middle of a firefight they still have this like internal peace that comes with like full acceptance of who they are as a person and like the life that they lead and like how they how they deal with it you know so they're just they're my favorite honestly little friend little friend Squeak. I'll make sure you're taken care of. Actually, I should, um, I should get you a babysitter <laughs> before I run around. I think, yeah, my ship collection's complete because I did end up finding, I can't remember, I think it was that, that one up there, right above my head. I can't remember where I found it, but I think I found it in one of the shops I was running around in in the last episode. But there's the SR1, there's my baby. The SR2, the daughter. <laughs> The, the big girl. <laughs> oh, these are so fun. Let me see, actually, really quick, if I get... Uh, I mean, I always had the N7 helmet. Where is my... Oh, is it... Oh, no, this is the original one. Okay, okay, this is the N7 breed. This is the one that she wears in... Mass Effect 2, but if you do this one, that's right! I just had like a flashback to the first scene that you have on a planet where Jenkins dies <laughs> and like Caden and, and Shepard are like talking in those masks like that's and like you're doing the drop out of the SR1. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's just that's so weird. I didn't I didn't think I didn't realize it for a second. I was like wait <laughs> that's Dang, I guess that's a good that's a good um, incentive to maybe do this one earlier on. It's, and it's the same, like, obviously same stats as, like, the N7 helmet you get in Mass Effect 2, but it's just, it's kind of cool to see her face. I don't like that this one covers up so much of her face. 
I don't feel like that's necessary. This one I feel like could have like a an ablative plate that maybe comes up or something. Um, but this one makes more sense, honestly. But like this one looks, you can see her face. That's what I like. <laughs> I like, I worked really hard on her face. Also, I keep talking towards the laptop and that's like not, the mic is on the opposite side of that. I don't know why I keep turning my head to talk towards the laptop. Oops, oops, oops. I actually don't, I don't want that on. I want to be able to see her hair and her face because I think they're cool. Or do I? Yeah. Yeah. We can see her face in that one, so we'll do the we'll do the. There it is. There's all there, there's my old one. My my very broken one. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh good, it's Monday. It means it's time for the lawnmowers. The relics in here. What? Why do I keep? Why am I keeping that in here? <laughs> why no? I just like keep it as like a coffee table decoration. Oh, that's amazing. Anyway, now that I've explored my room again and found all the new fun things, <laughs> um, I'm actually really I'm I'm super sad. I'm pretty sure it was Mass Effect Andromeda. If you pre-ordered it, you got. Did you get the N7? There was some sort of... Maybe it wasn't Mass Effect Andromeda. There was, like, some sort of, like, collector's thing. Where, like, an edition of something. Where you could get a, a Mass Effect... I'm pretty sure it was an N7 helmet that, like, actually lit up and everything. And I desperately wanted it. But at the time, I didn't really have the money. And I'm desperately sad. I'm so sad I didn't get it. Because it was a limited time thing. I would love to have the helmet to put on my desk. And also, it was like a, you, you could cosplay. Like, it was like a full-on helmet, like, lit up and everything that you could wear. And I was like, that would be such a great start to a cosplay for Shepard. But I didn't do it. Maybe someday I'll find one on eBay for, like, 500 bucks <laughs> or something. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching me, for watching with me. <laughs> this episode might be a bit small or it might be a bit rambly um but that is the final mission before the suicide mission oh my gosh i might have to take a break from recording for a bit i was gonna do the i was gonna do it like right now but maybe i'll do something else while they're freaking mowing outside but thank you all again for joining me so much for this whole thing it was super fun i've really enjoyed the legendary edition and i've enjoyed chatting with people and i know i'm up i'm pretty bad at doing the comments thing still but i enjoy reading your comments and like seeing everybody like chit chatting and hanging out so once again thank you for your support in the next video get ready stuff's about to go down <laughs> so thank you all again for watching really quick i want to say thank you to my patrons to all my patrons but especially reese galito my sapling tier patron thank you so much for your support and an extra special shout out to my two tree tier patrons christopher and adam christopher thank you so much for your support on this series and the other series as well i really appreciate it thank you so much and adam thank you so much for your support i just super duper appreciate it i hope everything's going well for you and uh, once again, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.